There's consequences that you pay to constantly seeking comfort and, and avoiding discomfort and avoiding hard work. And those consequences are you're never going to feel self-realized. You're never going to feel like you accomplished anything. You're never going to have this feeling of understanding that difficulty and struggle and, and the ability to push through that is a muscle. And you develop that muscle Correct. by doing it. And once you do, you develop a lot of self-satisfaction and you develop peace of mind and you... You understand that you can overcome obstacles. If you don't have to overcome obstacles, you never know whether or not you can. Like what you were talking about with trigger time. Mm -hmm. Unless you are faced with actual adversity, you don't understand how you're going to feel and how you're going to react when you overcome that adversity. My political philosophy is very mixed, mm -hmm. right? It's like I, I, I like a lot of different people's ideas, but ultimately all I really want is what's better for people. You know, I don't really have a, a vested interest in business. I'm not looking to like protect assets or anything weird. And I want people to have freedom. So I, in, in all ways, you know, and I think that, uh, when I look at politics, I look at like these utopian concepts about like what's possible. And then I look at what's, uh, what we have, going on right now and mm -hmm. I, I you know I, I wonder I think there's a lot of people out there like that and for some awful reason they never find whatever it is that can break them free they never catch a ride on that river out yeah you know I, and I got lucky I found stand-up comedy and uh, I had I had already I think a lot, a lot of it had come from martial arts too I'd fought a lot and I competed a lot in martial arts tournaments and I think that from that I realized that like these unconventional paths they brought me something that I wasn't getting from regular life I yep. get, it brought me self-esteem it gave me this feeling that I wasn't a loser it was the only thing that I'd ever done my whole life where I, I said wow maybe I'm not a loser right like, I kind of thought I was an outcast and a loser and then all of a sudden I was successful at something only because I was obsessed with it but then I knew th 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 there was no way I was ever going to be able to hold a regular job and then I got lucky when I was 21 and I found stand-up and so from then on I'd kind of like locked into this thing where oh, I'm just gonna do what I like and f what everybody says because everybody's giving me advice to do this and advice to do that and it never seems to be right. what I want to do and their advice is coming from a different world the, yeah you know and some people I guess like the corporate world I just I got lucky and I found a bunch of that I like and if you had said to me you know, if you asked me if I was, you know, outside of my life, and if I'm, I didn't know that I existed, and you said, do you think it's possible to be a cage fighting commentator slash stand up comedian? I'd be like, no. Right. Those, I mean, those, they don't I, go I, together. There's a real movement right now towards minimalism, or where people are trying to pare their life down as much as possible. Well, it's also, you got to think, like, what do you really appreciate? What's important to you? Like, what's really important to you? Yeah. Because you don't have forever. Right. So what is important to you? Because you only have 24 hours in a day. So what's important to you? Find out what the f that is and do more of that. Yeah. And try to figure out like how to how to make enough money so that you're not starving, that you're doing well. Yeah. But don't just chase that. Chase what you're trying to do. Like the, the point system attached to it, the monetary point system, it can get you all up because it'll get you t working like 12 hours a day, 13 know, hours a to day. To get what? To get more stuff to get better stuff to get more prestigious stuff to get stuff that you know all your other stuff having friends are really jealous of your stuff <laughs> yeah you're just gonna die bro and it's not even long term i mean like what are you getting out of it now i've always been curious but i've learned how to be more effectively curious as i've gotten older mm. this podcast has been a massive education for me an mm. unintended um accidental education the fact that I've been able to talk to so many interesting and intelligent people and get their perspectives and just sit across from them uninterrupted for hours at a time and get to see how their brain works and then to, to consider my own brain. And then, you know, in the beginning, there was a lot of bad podcasts. They didn't go that well. I wasn't that good at it. And I didn't think, first of all, I didn't think anybody was listening. Hmm. I remember the moment I realized people were listening. I was at a sold out show at the Chicago Theater and I was on stage and uh, I was doing this bit and uh, it was it had something to do with the podcast. And I said, um, how many of you guys listen to the podcast? And the place went, yeah. What, year was, this? what year was this? Um, maybe 2011. Whoa. 
So it's more of a reflect, reflection of the problem with human psychology is that we do tend to concentrate on negative things, which I think is overall very unhealthy for us because we're, we're hardwired to deal with real problems because we grew, we, we evolved trying to get away from predators and, you know, um, and, and, enemy tribes are coming over the hill and trying to steal our resources and now everything's pretty easy in that regard so now we're looking for problems in our culture mm. we're looking for problems in the mm. way people communicate and we're looking in many many cases we're looking to enact power over other people to avoid looking inward at our own problems and difficulties right if you look at online the people that that are the most disciplined that accomplish the most things and have the most impact spend the least amount of time complaining about other people mm -hmm. yeah the people that spend the most amount of time complaining about other people and the most of the time calling out people and insulting people and shaming people they always get it back at them. Someone always comes at them because they're filled with flaws. And they're the type of person that does that all the time is the type of person that's kind of shitty. You know, okay, and then yeah. other people are gonna say, here's the thing we found you wrote four years ago on Twitter, you piece of <laughs> or you're a this or a that. And it's like, you're involved in this constant cycle of negativity and like, it's not healthy for anybody. And the more time you can concentrate on yourself and people you care about and friendships and love and community and your actual interests, real interests, like you should have real interests. You should have hobbies. You have things you're curious about. You should have um, like subjects you're fascinated with that you, you in really like, I get pumped. I'm excited. Like I'm not thinking about complaining about people. Right. I'm not thinking about calling people out. I'm like, Ooh, what's this? We got some new footage. What do they got? Is this real? <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm excited. Like I yeah. want, I like positive things. And I think if I can express anything that will help people, the more you take care of your own, the less you're going to worry about other people's Mm -hmm. And the more you can enjoy things that you're actually interested in, right? as opposed to spending time cultivating negativity, which is so intoxicating. It's so easy for people to get caught up in this artificial drama. There's no one human being where everyone's going to listen. Mm -hmm. there's, no, there's no one positive message. Hey, we should just love each other. Hey, we should value community and friendship, and we should take care of our bodies and be healthy. There's no one person <laughs> that can say anything where everyone's going to listen. Yeah. But that is the most significant factor. Mm -hmm. The most significant factor is doing things that are positive both for your health and for your friendships and for your community. And also like choosing a path in life that is actually rewarding and satisfying. And that's hard. It's hard for a lot of us. Yeah. We talked about it on our podcast. Today. Oh, yeah. absolutely. It's a very difficult thing to do. And this idea that, you know, everybody starts at the same starting block is total horseshit. And that is something that people who are doing well like to stick in the face of people that are really were dealt a really bad hand of cards.